Before we get to today's Bengals breakdown, if you still love the Bengals, despite the loss of Joe Burrow, despite the not great feeling right now on the 2023 season, then spam me in the comment section a chance to show that you are a true diehard Bengals fan right now. Naturally, we begin with some discussion on the Bengals' new starting quarterback. That is, of course, Jake Browning, the former UDFA out of Washington. Browning is in a unenviable spot to a certain extent. He gets to be a quarterback. That's awesome. Uh, he gets his first real NFL playing time against the Ravens' defense, and then his first NFL start against the Steelers' defense, which is not a fun place to be. It is a very difficult and challenging spot for Browning, as the Bengals, not technically, but from a realistic standpoint, have to win this football game to keep their playoff hopes alive. As slim as they are right now without Joe Burrow, if the Bengals drop to 5-6 and six and lose against the Steelers, they'll be down tiebreakers against Cleveland, Houston, Pittsburgh. They'll be at least a game back, and it just doesn't seem likely, given their schedule down the stretch, they're going to be able to make a real push here. So it's on the shoulders, or at least the right arm, of Jake Browning to do everything he can to help the Bengals win. In a very small sample size over the course of his NFL career, two games played, only like a half of real football, mind you, a little more than a half, I guess, 53.3%, ah, three quarters, we'll call, we'll call it three quarters, 68 passing yards, 39 rushing yards. It has not exactly been the best results out of Jake Browning over the course of his career. His QBR is 45.6. He threw for all 68 against the Ravens. He did, however, add some nice rushing ability, 39 yards, a nice back shoulder throw to, to Jamar Chase for a score. The main stuff we've seen from Jake Browning is the preseason, which, again, very small sample sizes here. Not a lot to really read into or accumulate information there. He's added uh, 88 rushing yards the past two seasons, again, in kind of like what amounts to maybe two games worth-ish, somewhere in that, maybe three games worth of those two seasons uh, mixed in there. Clearly won the backup job, and the, there are some pros and cons here that I want to discuss. Let's start with the positives, right? He knows the offense. He's been here for years. He has great f f familiarity some of his strengths and weaknesses, frankly, kind of align with Joe Burrow, just more extreme versions of them. You know, he's got some mobility. Uh, the team seems to believe in him. The, the locker room, I think, has some faith in there. Now, faith in the back of quarterback can quickly, uh, you know, disappear or increase depending on how he plays. That's, that's why it's so tough and why he's, he's... Look, he's not Joe Burrow. He's not. So setting up the expectations... Uh, from that perspective is, is going to be dicey there. The arm strength is not very good. He's going he's gonna to float some balls. Those deep outs, those deep comeback routes, the, especially the ones across the hash marks, the opposite hash marks, they, they terrify me. They, there's not much velocity there. It's simply not who he is, but you can still run a lot of the same stuff because Burrow's weakness, quote-unquote, he does not have a cannon for an arm either. So you don't have to take stuff out of the playbook necessarily. You just might try to make it easier on him. You're going to need more easy buttons with him at the helm than you did with Joe Burrow. What is your confidence level in Jake Browning? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. If you're on the lower end of that pinned comment, you probably want this to be the case. To tank. Not win football games, get a higher draft pick, add that impact, defensive piece, offensive piece, trade down, get extra draft capital, or whatever. It is a very fair question to ponder, and I know we've already seen plenty of it on social media and in our comment section, about is the season kind of already over? And you're dangerously close to being in that position. As it sits right now, you are a game back of the wild card race. Tiebreakers involved there, but the Colts and Broncos for now have tiebreakers over you because you've only won games outside of uh, the win over the Bills in the NFC. So as it sits right now, you lose all the tiebreakers in similar games, AFC games, whatever. The Steelers are 6-4. and four. You play them this weekend. This, 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 this is a must-win football game. You lose this game. You're not going to have tiebreakers over pretty much everyone except the Bills. Maybe Indy if you beat them. You're going to have to win out. Because honestly, 10 wins might not be enough. 
Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it's a 10-win tiebreaker, but you might be on the wrong side of that tiebreaker. And Houston's going to win a bunch of games. Your best bet is that seven spot right now. You have to win this one against Pittsburgh. And given the way the schedule sets up, as we'll get into, it's not so much maybe tanking as it is just you're going to play the games the way you can, and you still just might not be good enough. More on that in a little bit, but first, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. It truly is just that simple. And you can mix and match NFL, you can mix and match college football games. There's a lot of ability that you're able to do on Price Picks. I am also, by the way, a very big fan of their flex play. The flex play makes life simpler for me uh, from that perspective. What the flex play is, you don't have to get all three right or all four right or all five right. You just got to get two out of three right. So here are my specialty Thanksgiving Prize Pick selections. That's more fun. We'll, we'll, we'll do some Sunday ones involving the Bengals when, when, when you want to get through this. Uh, give me more than Brian Robinson yards on the ground. He's been pretty effective this season in, in terms of just rush yards. And the Cowboys, if it's not that good, I think they'll try to feed him early. Uh, Jordan Love against a shaky Lions defense right now. Give me the more than passing yards. And I like Jake Ferguson against a not great commander secondary to have about maybe five catches, 45 yards, and maybe even a score against the commanders. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comments and the description of today's show. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for that first deposit match up to $100. Back to the tanking conversation. The Bengals will not quit yet. That's not how NFL teams are wired. You can't really turn off the switch and then turn it back on. You, that's just not how the competitiveness works. They are still alive in the playoff hunt. You don't have to tank yet. And in general, teams don't fully tank this time of the year. And what you normally see is the bad teams are just bad teams. The, the, the real tanking is done before the year began or at the very end of the season. I'm thinking of that Philadelphia game, for example, which worked out great for them. In the end, though, you just might not be good enough. So it might not be full-on tanking, trying to lose. It might just be you don't have the horses down the stretch to win football games where the thing that made you go so much is now out for the year with that wrist injury. Here's the Bengals' schedule, mind you. Week 12, Steelers. Week 13 at Jacksonville, Monday Night Football, Bengals are dogs this week. They'll be underdogs against Jacksonville. At home, they could be favored against Indy or Minnesota or both, but both those teams will also kind of still play off. Probably Minnesota more so than Indy, potentially. Then at Pittsburgh, at Kansas City, home against the Browns. I mean, there is a very real possibility, and, the, and the, it sits this way as it holds. All but one of those teams is a playoff team. The Chiefs are going to make it. If the Steelers beat you in week 12, they're still going to be in the playoff seed. Indy's not far behind, but they're out of it. Jags are going to be a playoff team. Minnesota will be the seventh right, right now uh, in the NFC. Your schedule's tough, and now you're down your best player. That's not a fun spot to be in. So is the Bengals' season over? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Talk free agency here kind of quickly. Uh, Bleach Report named one player each team has to add right now, and they picked Sammy Watkins for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Watkins did work out for the Colts earlier this month, and we heard nothing after it, which normally means the workout didn't go that well. Here was the argument for Bleach Report in terms of signing Sammy. Without Burrow leading the aerial attack, the Bengals need all the help they can get in the passing game. T. Higgins with a hamstring, Andre Yoshevich with a knee, both missed Thursday night's game. While Burrow might be able to work the, make the offense work with Jamar Chase and a few guys, Jake Browning is going to have a, difficult, a more difficult time moving the ball. Adding Sammy Watkins will give the Bengals another outside receiver who can come in and can play if Higgins' hamstring regresses again or Yoshivas doesn't work his way back into the lineup. I have thoughts on this, but what do you guys think? 
Do you want to sign Sammy Watkins? S for sign or P for pass? Vote where else but the comments. For me, this idea makes no sense. By the time you get Watkins up to speed and good to go with your playbook, etc., Higgins and Yoshivas are probably already back. And it's not an overnight thing you sign and they're good to play. You're going to need a little bit of ramp up time there for Sammy Watkins. Also, he's not good anymore. It's not like you're signing a great player to help out down the stretch in your playoffs calendar. You're adding a cooked player who also thinks he's a lizard, alien, whatever it is. I'm, I'm not kidding. Google it. He thinks he's a, a li lizard person, which, like, I don't know. How do you think that but also not know it? Like, uh, wouldn't you know? Uh, anyway, I digress. He's kind of crazy. Um, he hasn't done anything. He's done nothing in years. Like, 325 yards, 12 games played? Ooh, cool, whatever. It doesn't move the needle for me. He's not better than Trenton Irwin. He's not. Like, Irwin, has Ir Irwin and Browning have chemistry. Those two trust each other. And with the way this season's probably going to go, why am I signing an old guy? Like, I I'm going to give more reps to, to Charlie Jones. I'm going to give more reps to Yoshivas if the season kind of falls apart I don't need to add my... He would, I think, legitimately be the, the seventh receiver I would play. That, that doesn't do anything for me. Now, if the Bengals make some moves, we will have videos for you guys, so make sure you are subscribed. YouTube.com slash Bengals TV. Free videos right here on the channel. One other note I wanted to mention for some actual roster moves. Shaq Leonard was cut by the Colts. He was in a reduced role. He was not happy with it. I don't think he makes any sense for Cincinnati. Uh, he's not the player he once was, not by a long shot. Linebacker isn't a need, and he's due $6.11 million this season. You are not a true contender the way you were with Joe Burrow. Adding a third linebacker and paying him more cap-wise than you're going to be paying Pratt and Wilson, I believe, doesn't, doesn't make sense for Cincinnati. Now for some actual roster move. Jackson Kirkland, the UDF out of Washington, Placed on the practice squad injured list. Not sure why, but that did happen. They've, to make with that spot now open, Drew Plitt, the local kid from Loveland, has been signed to the practice squad. Uh, he'll be the quarterback three, won't be active, but just adds a body. And uh, I, I know where Drew Plitt's from. I'm sure he was available locally. He's from the area. I grew up like, he grew up like a half hour from the stadium or something. Chase Brown, meanwhile, designated to return from injured reserve. So he should make his way back, maybe not this week, but in the coming weeks down the stretch, so some more depth at running back. 